Okay, uh, today uh, we're, uh, we're talking about uh, how much God has done for you. Um, open our Bible in uh, Luke chapter 8, verse uh, 39. Luke chapter 8 verse uh, 39 said, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told over the town how much Jesus had done for you. I will read it again. Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Um, uh, my uh, message for today is uh, like a testimonial message through scripture. So uh, I want to uh, start with uh, my personal testimony. Um, it was uh, very clear in my mind the first, uh, the first time I encountered God in my life. That was uh, August 28, 1995. Very clear. I was so depressed and emotionally down during that time. I was so depressed and emotionally down It hurts, you know? <laughs> Masakit na bong. <laughs> Masakit na busted. Nagbiro lang. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm so depressed and emotionally down during that time. So I didn't know what was I'm going to do and I, I had no direction. Um, I was studying a computer course in Bulacan and then uh, after school I went to my grandparents' house uh, instead of uh, heading home. Siyempre, medyo magulong ang isip ko. So when I arrived in my Lola's house, I was surprised because there are some youth who came from the church gathered there to visit my cousin. So during our sharing time, to make story long, God spoke to me and when the youth leader shared how much God changed her life, and the tears in my eyes fell down and I surrendered my life to Jesus. I received Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior. That was August 28, 1995, 7 o'clock p.m. Paano ko natandaan? Tumina ko sarilo bago ako nag No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, from that encounter, everything had changed in my life. I felt His abundant mercy and His unconditional love. Brothers and sisters, during our tough times, in the middle of the storm, you can expect that God is there to save us. Amen. Sometimes we encounter God in the time that we are down and helpless. Not only when we are in the church, but most of the time, when we are uh, down and helpless. Have you encountered God during your top situation? Amen. And what God has done for you? Who wants to give his testimony? I will give you five minutes here. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not kidding. Come on. Tell how much God has done, has done for you. ABC lang. Basta ABC lang ang testimony. Ano yung ABC? Accurate, brief, concise. Who? Oh, Nate. Amen. Um, uh, I just want to thank God for 
um, giving me the opportunity to start working at Chance as a uh, uh, mental health tech with Pita Suzette. Of course, thank you for that. And, and also um, for school as well. I know he's going to be there with me as I go to class and go to work at the same time. And I think I, I'm excited for my future. And I just want to thank God for that. Amen. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. So, uh, uh, thank God. You know, uh, our purpose is uh, to live up uh, or to give glory to our God, not, not to us. So, uh, my purpose when I uh, give a testimony, especially during sermon is uh, to glorify God. Amen. So uh, that's why uh, I invited inviting you here. So, okay, next uh, week, naman. No, <laughs> Pastor Pat is uh, our preacher. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, for this uh, uh, scripture this afternoon, in our scripture this afternoon. The background is when Jesus and his disciple uh, sailed to the region of Gerasim and he met a demon-possessed man. That's the background of the story of our scripture today. So according to Luke chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 said, They sailed to the region of the Gerasim which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. Wow. So made you, oh, parang made you, uh, you and step back and then, kung ako yun na siguro, baka uurong ako. <laughs> no? So, uh, according to Luke, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. So the man in the story was possessed by the demons, not only one demon. Take note, my friends, not only one demon, but a uh, legion. As the scripture said in verse 30, Jesus asked him, what is your name? He answered, legion. He replied, because many demons had gone into him. In the time of Christ, the legion consisted of 6,000, the Roman legions. So, just imagine this man possessed by 6,000 demon spirit. I can really imagine how difficult the situation of this man. The demon spirit ruined his life. In verse 27b said, for a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in a tomb. He was considered a walking dead. You know, not a walking dead, just like that. So he was crazy. The demons made him mentally insane. In verse 29, he said, many times it had sized him and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Wow. He had an extraordinary strength and no one can control him. But when, G when he encountered Jesus, he begged for him. And Jesus cast out all the demon spirit in his body. In one moment, he was healed and he came back on his right mind. Everything has changed in his life after he met Jesus. During our tough situation, when the things we are out of control, Jesus is always in control. Amen. I will say it again. When the things were out of control, Jesus is always in control. Even if it, is, if it seems that God had become silent, 
Sometimes nananahimik ang Diyos, eh. hindi natin siya maramdaman. We must believe that He knows what is going on in every one of us. Because God works in us during our tough situations. Prophet Elijah encountered God when he was depressed and terrified. He ran for his life because Jezebel wants to kill him. You know Jezebel? He's not a mermaid. <laughs> Jezebel is the wife of King Ahab. He's the queen of Israel. He's, she's powerful and uh, have a big influence. So, kaya nakakatakot. Nakakatakot talaga siya. So, according to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9 and 10 said, And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. So Elijah experienced the greatness and the power of God when that time he went to give up his life. That's why he said to God in verse 4, I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. Kunin mo na ako, Lord. Ganun kabigat yung kanyang nararamdaman. He said, take my life. But God appears to Elijah. And God uplifted his spirit and he received the instruction of God. Brothers and sisters, try to calm yourself. Pause for a moment and try to listen to the voice of God. And he's also listen to you. Our challenges, difficulties, problems in life is an opportunity for us to grow in our in our knowledge about God, to Him, to know Him well, and experience His goodness. Our challenges can build up our faith in Jesus. Amen? Our difficulties can build up our trust in Jesus. Amen? Our problems can build up our relationship with Jesus. God rebuilds our life through Jesus Christ. Amen. God revealed the life of demon-possessed man through Jesus. Another personal testimony. Last year when we came back after a vacation in the Philippines, nagpakasyon kami sa Pilipinas last year, my health got worse. And I went to the ortho surgeon and he said that I need a hip and knee surgery. Kung natatandaan nyo kung gano'ng kabagal maglakad last year, ewan ko natatandaan nyo ang bagal kong maglakad because of the pain. So, this doctor's report was overwhelming. I cannot explain the feeling, but it scared me. Siyempre, hindi naman ako superman. No, kahit pastor ako, natatakot din ako. No. So Iris and I talked about the surgery and we decided to do that surgery this summer. This summer. And we also gave a plan to buy our own house. Kasi unahin namin yung surgery. So one night, on that same week, after evening devo my evening devotion, God spoke to me. It was like, God said to me, ask a miracle healing. I just read uh, uh, the verses came from Mark. Uh, Jesus uh, healed the blind, the blind man. So I asked myself, if Jesus uh, can heal the blind man during his time, sabi ko ba, kaya rin niya kung pagalingin ngayon. Amen. Hallelujah. So that night, I prayed with confidence and asked for a miracle healing. After a few weeks, my health got better. And until now, I can see the improvement in my health. And this is the time I plan to have the surgery. 
because uh, the student uh, uh, on their vacation, so so this is the best time for me. But you know, God changed my plan. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, God changed my health condition. He also changed the plan. And I set aside the plan to undergo his surgery. Because I believe God can do something better for me. God can do something greater for me. Amen. God can do something greater for us. Hallelujah. Amen. So, yun po yung aking laging uh, pinahawakan sa aking puso. God can do something greater for me. And God restored our dream to have a new house this year. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All praises and glory to Him. He is the God of all miracles. God revealed my life through faith and my relationship with Him. God gave me a clear direction. He showed me His plans and He reaffirmed my purpose. I'm here standing telling my story. Just like the old hymn said, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Later na lang. Mga tuktugan ang bigla ni Brother Bong. So, this is my story. How about you, my friends? What is your story? Tell your story instead of telling the story of other people. Tell how much God has done for you. Don't be shy like me. No? Don't be shy to share your story. Even our failures. Because through those failures, you have an opportunity to encounter God. Through our mistakes, failures, and weaknesses, God reveals our life through our faith in Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? amen? The man in the story was once became a burden to his family and in his community. But after he met Jesus, God revealed his life. He became a blessing to many people. He became a messenger of God. And he might also become a messenger of the gospel. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, you are so gracious and merciful. We thank you for your relentless love and goodness to us. Thank you, Jesus, in the time of tough situation, you are here to give us comfort and lift up our spirit. We are also grateful, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to know, to know you and to have a relationship with you and we experience your power your greatness your kindness and your great mercy in our lives thank you Jesus for building up our life to make us worthy in your eyes and to give us clear path and to know our purpose in life Lord empower us with your spirit so that we can leave your word and we can share to others all the wonderful things that you have done for us. Help us to live with compassion and love to one another. To love other people every day. And your Holy Spirit is strengthening us to overcome all our challenges. All these things we pray by the power of 
Jesus Christ's name.